What happens when the beast awakens? The world's biggest active volcano is poised to explode, rupturing the Earth. The exhalation of this huge mountain will be a once-in-a-lifetime occasion. The ongoing effort to monitor the volcano using seismometers, spectrometers, tilt meters, GPS devices and other cutting-edge equipment was years in the making and did not nearly meet the scale of the eruption. There is still a great deal we don't know about the mountain's internal workings. The volcano has attracted interest from all over the world with its lava rivers that are burning hot and its ash clouds. How hazardous are these eruptions though? How many people are killed by volcanoes? Join us as we explore the largest volcano ever that is about to crack open the Earth. Hawaii's Mauna Loa has reawakened after a 38-year quiet, the longest in its recorded history. The bowl-shaped top of the volcano was inundated in lava, which stained the blue-black sky with reddish tints. Only a minor amount of lava spilled over the cliff during the course of the night, as it largely emerged and flowed inside this crater. The northeastern sides of the volcano, the part of which is slowly being ripped apart, were seen to be oozing molten rock as the sun rose. The situation is fast changing, and past Mauna Loa eruptions have shown to be unpredictable. At Mauna Loa, there are eruptions that last just one day. Long-lasting eruptions are another possibility. Volcanologists have been anxiously awaiting this day for decades, especially those at the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. Researchers can tentatively exhale a sigh of relief now that the eruption has started, because it does not yet appear that a particularly destructive scenario is developing. Like its Hawaiian relatives, Mauna Loa was created by a superheated plume of material that rose from the mantle to the Pacific tectonic plate's base. When that plume touches the plate, it decompresses and the substance starts to melt, producing enormous magma reservoirs. And as the Pacific plate has moved over time, a string of volcanoes that are fed by this underground furnace has emerged. Mauna Loa, which means Long Mountain in Hawaiian, is usually enormous, rising 10.5 miles above the base of the ocean and occupying an area of 2,000 square miles. Moreover, it is hyperactive. Since the seafaring Polynesians first occupied the Hawaiian Islands, eruptions have been regularly recorded. There have been 33 recorded eruptions since 1843, the year that thorough written records first appeared. Since then, the chemistry of the magma has remained largely constant, producing runny, extremely hot lava flows that can reach temperatures of 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit and a lack of any particularly explosive activity. Eruptive activity was previously concentrated either at the summit of Mauna Loa or on its slopes. The most recent 33, however, all started at the summit and half of them remain secure inside the caldera. However, lava has occasionally and unexpectedly come out of one of the two rift zones on the flanks of Mauna Loa. The southwest rift zone, one of these regions, is capable of channeling lava directly into surrounding residential areas, such as the districts of Kaa and South Kona, in a matter of hours, making it a very dangerous situation if lava were to be released there. However, the scenario is a little less dangerous when lava is ejected from the northeast rift zone, as it occurs in this eruption. The most active region of the rift zone is kilometers away, and while the city of Hilo is below and has previously been threatened by lava invasions, the hills above it are mild. There is a risk that molten rock may reach Hilo if lava flows from the northeast rift zone for several weeks, but scientists would know if this was likely to happen well in advance, allowing locals plenty of time to flee. We are not, thankfully, considering a southwest rift zone situation. In that situation, there may be fatalities. Even though Mauna Loa is one of the volcanoes that are most frequently seen on Earth, it nevertheless keeps a lot of its secrets. Even while some trends have emerged, each eruption has been unique in some way. A 300-day-long eruption in 1859 that produced a mind-blowing 32-mile-long torrent destroyed towns and essential resources. A 91-year-old eruption produced 491 million cubic yards of lava on Hawaii's Big Island, 
and destroyed portions of the island's infrastructure, although only lasted 23 days. Prior to this eruption in 1984, Hilo was on the verge of being submerged by Mauna Loa's lava flows, a situation that authorities have unsuccessfully attempted to avert in the past by employing explosives to redirect the lava flows. Mauna Loa has been noticeably trembling since 2019. It has been shaking and changing shape in a way that suggests magma is churning inside. Researchers believe that magma was being injected into a reservoir at the peak this past September, when the unrest intensified even further. Shortly after, civil defense personnel in Hawaii held meetings to get the populace ready for a potential emergency. The volcano started to shake violently, just before magma broke the surface on November the 27th. Why has it taken almost four decades for it to erupt once more, and why now? To try to determine the answer, researchers will need to keep looking into the eruption and its after-effects. There is no doubt that the volcano underwent a metamorphosis, but what caused it is now unknown. For Mauna Loa, it wasn't unusual that there weren't any warning indications in the days before the eruption. The start of the fireworks, which happened safely at the summit, wasn't either. The only thing left to do at this point is to observe how events develop. As previous paroxysms on Mauna Loa have shown, it is difficult to predict how an eruption would develop. Although unlikely during this eruption, explosive activity at the top, which can produce transitory ash plumes, is feasible. Lava flows from the volcano's flank provide the biggest threats, and whether they become disastrous depends on how frequent and persistent they are. Currently, volcanic gases like sulfur dioxide and ashfall pose the biggest threat to human health because they irritate the lungs. People who are in the eruption's downwind should pay attention to air quality alerts and stay inside if there is ash or a volcanic plume. About 60 volcanoes erupt annually. Some of them catch us off guard while others are repeat offenders. One of the most active volcanoes in the world is Kalawi. The current eruption started 35 years ago, although activity has increased recently. Despite the fact that its lava flows have been actually erupting in people's backyards, mercifully, just one significant injury has been documented. A man who was struck by molten rock projectiles as he was sitting on his balcony. This can give the impression that volcanoes aren't particularly deadly, yet a large portion of the world's population really lives close to numerous volcanoes that are much deadlier than Kilaui. Approximately 280,000 people have died at the hands of volcanoes since 1500, with only six eruptions accounting for 170,000 of those deaths. Nearly 800 million people currently reside within 100 kilometers of an active volcano, placing them well within the range of potentially fatal volcanic risks. About 200 million of these people reside in Indonesia. The 1,500 active volcanoes in the world, which are dispersed across 81 nations, are projected to attract even more residents as populations rise. For those who live close to volcanoes, there are numerous dangers. Lava can ignite pockets of methane gas formed as it burns vegetation, which can result in explosions. Additionally, it creates shaky new land when it reaches the ocean, where it lazes with steam, hydrochloric acid and glass fragments. Sulfur dioxide, one of the gases that volcanoes can release even when they are dormant, is another danger. However, less than 2% of documented volcanic fatalities are attributed to lava and gas together. The biggest death toll from volcanic gas occurred in Cameroon in 1986, when carbon dioxide from Lake Neos flooded nearby villages, killing almost 1,500 people. The majority of fatalities caused by volcanoes are caused by pyroclastic flows and lahars, which are debris-filled volcanic mud flows that have killed about 120,000 people in the past 500 years. Unlike the gentle sloping shield volcanoes like Kilaui, these are typically connected with massive conical volcanoes located near tectonic boundaries such as the Ring of Fire. Pyroclastic flows, which can reach temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius, 
are extremely swift avalanches of rock, ash and gas. Anyone who gets in their way almost certainly dies as they destroy everything in their path. The Roman city of Pompeii was devastated in 79 AD by pyroclastic flows and, in 1902, they killed close to 30,000 people on the Caribbean island of Martinique. Volcanic ash can cover distances of hundreds or even thousands of kilometers during big eruptions. It can bury large areas and interfere with essential services like transportation. Famine and disease have often accompanied such occurrences with crop failures or climate shifts brought on by gas and ash. Even the most remote volcanoes may be seen to some extent thanks to satellite monitoring, but only around 20% of all volcanoes on the globe have any ground-based monitoring. Additionally, a volcano with no known past erupts every two years or so. These can be the most deadly because prolonged dormancy can result in more powerful eruptions and because the local population may be less prepared. We should keep an eye on the world's volcanoes, even when they seem to be sleeping. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.